Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark, and today I want to talk to you about the new suspension I got for the Mustang. Now, as I explained in my last video, the Mustang is sitting way too tall for what I like right now. So, you know what I had to get? Got me some coilovers. Look at those. Well, look at the box anyway. They're not actually in the box right now because I've already put them on the Mustang. So, I figured I'd show you the box and you can see how pretty and nice it comes in. So, I got the Petters Extreme coilovers. Um, these things were actually a fairly decent price. I didn't want to go anything too cheap and I didn't want to go anything way too expensive because, you know, I don't want to spend that much money right now. Maybe one day down the road when I like maybe make it a serious race car, I'll get some nice coilovers. But for now, they were about 1100 bucks. Can't complain. And I'm going to try them out and see how I like them. And if I don't like them, you know what? I'll get something different. But before we get to the suspension, I want to talk about something else. So after the autocross, I decided that uh, these tires are crap. They suck. I don't like them at all. Uh, I drove through a tiny puddle. I lost traction when I was just out driving around. It should not be that bad. And also, like I'm used to driving on some better tires. Uh, the BMW had the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, and I really like those tires. But for the BMW, I did eventually upgrade to some Falcon RT660s, and man, what did that make a difference. So, since I like those, you know what I did for the Mustang? Got me set for them as well. Also got some new wheels. Uh, I wanted to go with some wider tires, so I got some nice wheels. And these ones are now 275s. Now the wheels I went with, they're called SVE Drifts. Um, there was a bunch of people that liked them and I didn't see any bad reviews. They were super cheap. I'm not going to complain. The set of four of them was like 600 bucks. And that honestly in the car world, that's a steal. Uh, they do have a lifetime warranty and I think they look good. So that's what I went with. So I wanted to show you what the difference between the original wheels I have here what the new ones are. So the original set of wheels have these federal super steels or what do they call them? Something steels. And I don't like them. They're not very good. Um, they suck in any kind of wet weather. They don't have any good traction at the autocross, which I experienced last weekend. Um, they're 255s and the new ones are 275s. Now, I wanted to go with some wider wheels on the back, but everything I could find said that you would have to modify the body. Uh, there's a bump stop that you need to take off and then once the bump stop is off then you can put 305s in the back. Now I didn't want to actually go through and do that just yet. I wasn't sure what my rule book allowed but I did find a class that I can do that in so it's a little too late. I already bought these so I'm going to stick with these and next year once I wear these tires out I'm just going to put some regular tires on those and get some wider wheels and put some nice 305s on the back of this thing. Look some nice meat. Well wait, wait would you look at that. I really like the way they fit on there. So, if you get real close to them, you can see they just, they're flush. Now, as you can see, it really wasn't that big of a difference at the moment. All I've done so far is I put the rear coilover set up on the rear. Well, it's not coilovers, but the, I bought a coilover kit, and the rear stuff is put on so I, know I can adjust the height. I have adjusted it down so that it's level with the front. That way, I got a nice level stance. Mustangs usually have a little bit of a rake, and I prefer the leveled look, so that's what I went with. Now when you lower your car to the ground in the rear, uh, this has a panhard bar set up where there's a, a single bar that's going to connect to your body underneath over here and then it's going to connect to your axle over here. So as you, your axle goes up and down, the bar goes like this and so your axle kind of moves like that. So since I've lowered it down a little bit, you can actually tell that I need to put it on there and adjust it. It's not really bad right now, but you can see that this side is pretty close to being flush. But then if we go over to the other side, this side sticks out just a little bit. So it's not really bad now. I'm not going to put it on until once I get my coilovers on. But once I do that and I lower this down, I'm going to lower it down just to probably right to where the fenders are a little bit above the tire. You know, I autocross and do track days, so I want to have a little bit of clearance. I'm not going to slam this thing to the ground. But once I do that, then I'm going to need a panhard bar because it's going to push the axle over even more. And I need to fix that. All right, so I got the front coilovers in now, got both sides installed. Um, it actually was pretty easy. If you guys really want to see how to install these, go ahead and click on my video up above for when I installed some lowering springs on my girlfriend's car. It's pretty much exactly the same thing. The only difference is, is that when I did these, I didn't actually have to change the springs out. That was something that we just had to, I just had to change the whole unit out instead of changing the spring on it. So that made things a lot easier. Now the downside to these is that as I said earlier, I was waiting on to get some camper plates and the camper plates I got, 
don't work with these, so I just installed these as they are. Uh, there is a camber adjustment on these coilovers right here. This little hole is slotted so you can move it in and out a little bit, which would make things a little bit easier. Hopefully it gives me enough camber, but probably not. Later on down the road, I'll probably have to take these off and put some camber plates on there. Well, now that I got the coilovers on the front, I'm gonna go ahead and try to adjust the ride height of everything. Uh, I know this is gonna take me quite a long time. So on the front ones, what I have to do is I gotta take the wheel off, and then I gotta come in here and I gotta undo this. Once this ring is undone, and then I gotta twist the whole thing and then lock the ring. And put my wheel back on, and that's how I adjust each side on the front. On the rear, it's a different story. I have to actually raise the car in the air, and I gotta lower the axle all the way down. And it's gonna have pretty much the same setup where there's gonna be a little ring on the bottom of the spring. It looks a lot different, but same basic idea. I'm gonna loosen the ring, and then I'm gonna, well, actually, it probably look more like this. I'm gonna loosen this ring, and adjust that up and down, and it'll change the right height of the spring in the back. So, once I get all that done, then I'll get my alignment done. That way I can, you know, not wear out my tires too soon. I'm gonna be running too much camera in the front anyway, but, you know, I try to make them last as long as I can. Well, before I can actually go do the alignment, I'm going to put the wheels back on, and now that I've lowered the front, I'm going to lower the rear, and I'm going to put on that panhard bar. Alright, so here's a quick little comparison about the size difference between the new panhard bar and the factory one. Look how much thicker this one is. Like, it's, it's pretty beefy. Like, the ends are beefy, the rods are beefy, it's beefy. So. A little side view as well. Look how much more metal is on this, on the outside here versus here. Like that looks pretty chintzy compared to that one. I don't think I'll ever break this. If I do, I feel like I did something wrong. Well, now that I got it down on all four, we can take a quick look at it. And it's looking pretty even. I will have to drive it around and let everything settle. Once I do that, then I'll be able to adjust everything. It's gonna be a long process. I'll have to adjust a little bit of the right side, the rear side, the front side, the left side, the back side, the upside, the downside. All the different sides. Eventually I'll get it to where I need it to be. If you take a look, since I've done the pan hard bar, you can see that the tire pretty much kind of pokes out just a little bit on this side. And just a little bit on that side. So I'm gonna say I got it pretty close to being in the center. Or at least it's good enough for my eyeballs. I don't know if you guys see any differently, but it looks good to me. Well, now that I got the right height dealt with, let's make it a little handle a little bit better. I got some sway bars for it. I'm gonna put those on there and I'll show you what it looks like and what the difference is between the two. So right now I'm in the middle of trying to put on my sway bars that I just bought. And I kinda wanna show you the little bit of trouble that I'm running into, something you guys should probably check if you're getting the same ones that I have. All right, so these are the white line sway bars I got. Well, the front one anyway. And right here, oh, there it is. This right here is one of the adjustable links that you get with it. So before you guys put them on there, you need to check these holes. Because, my finger, here. Right now, I can't put anything through any of these holes because it don't fit. Let's see. Nothing fits in these holes because the holes aren't properly drilled out. That one's kinda, uh, it almost fits. But I need to draw all these holes out. I tried to do it on the car when I had this in there, but there is not enough room to draw out the holes. So when you guys get these, make sure these holes are cleared out before you actually put them in there. That way you don't have to take it back out like I had to. All right, so with my little drill, I got the right size and I drilled these bad boys out. Look how much easier that fits in there now. You know, sometimes some companies don't like to go through and do some quality control and make sure everything fits. Like, this is their stuff they gave me, and it don't fit in their holes. So, if I didn't have a drill and a drill bit, which everybody should have, I would not be able to fix that. Now, for the rear sway bar, I also went with white line as I did with the front, but they do things a little bit differently, and I wanted to show you. All right, so I got the factory one out right there, and you can see there's quite a big difference between the two. Uh, this one attaches to the axles there and there, and this one's gonna attach to the axles here and here. So this is gonna have like some clamps that go around the axle that hold it there. And then you can see where these end links are that attach the body, that will be the actual end links on here. So hopefully this is a better design. It's what they went with and everybody seems to say that these work pretty well. So let's find out. All right, so I got the sway bars installed. And as you can see, 
as I was showing here. Uh, the linkage hooks up here in the back. And they give you these little brackets here where they attach to your axle instead of on the ends like they were before. So this actually makes it a little bit easier. If anything, it makes it easier for adjusting. So if I want to take my uh, sway bar here and make it tighter or looser, then I can do that a lot easier than if it was located back over here where it was. So, and as you can see, I got my new adjustable pan hard bar on. That way I can adjust my axle over and make it straight. And I have my coil over kit installed as well. I have it level right now and after a little while I'll drive it around see how it sits and then if I want to change it around and then once I get all that done then I'll probably go ahead and get an alignment done Alright, so finally got the Mustang done. I am so glad. It looks so good. Uh, it is, right, it's a little stiffer than I like, but something I knew was going to happen and something I can live with. Hey guys, if you like what you saw, smash that thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, the next time I post a video on one of my cars, you guys will know. Also, I'll leave my Instagram handle down below. I do post there from time to time. Thank you guys. I will see you next video.